Good morning. Grace and peace to you in the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Welcome to worship this morning at Pilgrim United Church of Christ. Shining like the light of your 
Please join me in our call to celebrate. What must we do to perform the works of God? Our ancestors sought that answer. So they broke bread and tried to speak holy words. But God was already there. What must we do to perform the works of God? We perform right rituals and offer beautiful prayers, hoping that somehow we might summon God's presence. What must we do to perform the works of God? We offer that prayer in moments of fear and grief, hoping that magic would call the Spirit, and we forget that God is already there. What must we do to perform the works of God? We shall teach stories to our children and grandchildren, encouraging them to hold to the truth that you, God, are here already, working through our hands.
Please join me in this morning's unison prayer. It is hard to count how many times we have felt lost, holy God. Sometimes it feels like we call out for manna every day, wanting and hoping for anything to fill our fears and anxiety. So we try to find you and forget that you have been beside us every step of the journey as living manna who sustains us all of our days. Help us to breathe deeply today as we rest in this space and remember that you are here. Grant us to ca- the courage to carry this truth out into the world. Amen. Our first reading is from Exodus chapter 16, verses 2 through 4. The whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. For you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill the whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I am going to rain bread from heaven for you, and each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way I will test them, whether they will follow my instruction or not. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of the Israelites, Draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the Israelites, they looked toward the wilderness and the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the complaining of the Israelites. Say to them, At twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening quails came up and covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of dew all around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a fine flaky substance, as fine as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. Our second reading is from John chapter 6, verses 24 through 35. So when the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Very truly, I tell you, you are looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him who he has sent. So they said to him, What sign are you going to give us then, so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, Give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. The word of the Lord. Please join me in a moment of prayer. Gracious God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. On any given moment, on any given day, one might hear the words, I'm hungry, falling out of the windows of my house. It's a statement that I, especially over the course of this summer, have become very accustomed to. I'm hungry. And then it's followed by an automatic response, 
Well, what do you want to eat? What do we have to eat? They ask in return. And I respond, well, you live here, so you know where the food is. Go find something for yourself. And then they respond, but I don't know what we have. Then go look. And then when they come back and say, but I don't know what they have, I have realized something else is going on. And I ask one more question. It sounds like you don't know what you want. And then we can insert a long, frustrated silence, probably with an eye roll. Well, what do we have? And then it's followed again by the question, what do you want? And this sensation of hunger is one that I think all people are accustomed to. It's one of the earliest sensations we experienced as infants. Outside of discomfort and pain, I think hunger is the sensation that met us first. It's what caused us to scream without abandon as our guts twisted with that retching feeling of emptiness that waited to be filled. Because we know what it feels like to be hungry. But I think that this hunger is often accompanied by a similar feeling of not being entirely sure of what we want. We know we want food, but do we want sweet food? Do we want salty food? Do we want hot food? Do we want cold food? Do we want something to drink? Do we want ice cream or do we want some carrots? Do we want a big meal or a snack? And all of the decisions that we have to make on any given day, we meet this one often because we expend our energy, our bodies, utilize the carbs and the fats and the proteins that we feed it in order for our bodies to simply breathe and our hearts to beat and our brains to continue to process information. So we expend a lot of calories, which means we need calories. And we get hungry persistently, especially preteens and teenagers. I know that if you at any point in time have housed a child between the ages of 11 and, I don't know, 20, you know that the statement, I am hungry, will be a regular occurrence and it will slowly grind and erode your soul because it happens all the time. And so, as a mom of preteens, it's no surprise to me that Jesus is met with a mass of people who follow him and over and over again say, I'm hungry. Because it was last week, we saw Jesus and he broke bread over and over and over again and satisfied the hunger of these people. And so they remembered that. They remember that sweet taste of bread and how it kept coming about, how their stomachs were gleefully filled to the point of comfort. And they were content. So they followed him because they became hungry again. And friends, I think we're more persistent about finding Jesus and following Jesus so that they could get more and more of this bread. I think they were probably more persistent than the people who keep calling you to talk to you about your car. cars. Extended warranty. Because they're hungry. And they know Jesus has something to satisfy them. And they want bread because that's what they remember that they had. But Jesus says, hold up. I'm not sure you're actually looking for bread. Sure, it makes you feel good. Sure, it makes you, t sure, it tastes good. Sure, it feels that hole in your stomach. But I know, and you know, that eventually you will get hungry again, and then you're going to want more bread. What you need, crowds of people, is bread that endures for eternity. And they say, yes, we want that. Tell us how to do the works of God. And they respond as if they are a group of people who believe in their deepest selves that they will never experience hunger again. But that's where they miss the point, because Jesus isn't talking about food. Jesus is talking about faith. 
the thing that bubbles up in our souls not long after we learn the pain of hunger. For those of us that were lucky enough to grow it in homes where we received nurture, we were gifted the faith that the ones called to care for us would tend to our needs. And in doing that, we learned how to trust. Trust in our caregivers and our parents and our grandparents and our older siblings. Trust that our empty bellies would be filled. And many of us learned to live into that trust. And that trust is what Jesus identifies as faith. Now, faith is not a noun in this passage. It can't be compared to this actual piece of bread, as this faith doesn't have mass or take up space. Instead, the faith that Jesus is talking about is a verb. It's not summoned by simply believing in something, but it's a deep trust, a deep feeling that somehow changes us. And this trust has the power to transform our fear into hope. It has the power to transform our perceived failures into opportunity. It has the power to shift the whole way we look and experience the world. This bread, this faith, this trust, this is what Jesus is talking about. It's something that has the ability to reorient our entire lives and not just satisfy the hunger we periodically experience. Instead, it has the power to shift and change and alter the world around us. So much so that when we receive and live into this faith, when we do the work of living within it, we see how easily dignity could be offered to each human being. So much so that our fear, our own personal fear of not having enough, would be replaced by the truth that there has always been enough. It would help us see that if we have hunger, there are probably those around us who also have hunger. It would give us eyes to see past our own pain into the faces of mothers whose eyes stream with tears of grief and with fear for their children. And this faith would give us the courage to remind us that we can trust each other with our lives. That we, now and always, have entirely depended upon God and one another. This is the bread I'm talking about. This is the life-giving bread of faith. And Jesus says, Truly, I tell you, when you find this bread... It will satisfy you if you work it. But we have to work it because this this faith is rooted in action. And this morning, Christ reminds us that we must be rooted in action. Our faith has to be rooted in work. It has to be rooted in trust. It has to be a verb and not a noun. And it has to be rooted in vulnerability and honesty. And it has to be rooted in the same hunger that God carries that this world might be the place God long ago dreamed it would be. Where no masses of people, where no children, where no mothers, where no fathers, where no parents, where no neighbors would have to offer the statement, I'm hungry, ever. Because they would have already been satisfied. So may it be, dear friends. Thanks be to God. Amen. Travel
darkness where my people live in fear Who will speak of truth and charity so all of them can hear If you go where I am sending you, I always will be near Here I am, go for me, here I am This morning, I would like to invite all of you to pause this video for a moment and share some joys and concerns that you have with those that are worshiping with you. If you are worshiping alone, I'd like to invite you to call a trusted friend and share some joys and concerns. This morning, I have a few prayers that I would like to share for Debbie, whose father has entered hospice. So prayers for Debbie and her father, Bob, and also for Laverne, who anticipates a hip replacement surgery next week. For all other prayers, we offer them to God in the quiet of our hearts. Let us pray together. Good and gracious God, new every morning is your light, and all day long you are working for good in the world. Stir up in us a desire to serve you and to live peacefully with our neighbors. Stir up in us a desire to selfish, selflessly lay aside all of those things that we cling to for ourselves. We ask that your spirit might move in our midst, reminding us that our lives depend upon one another. We pray that you might give us the wisdom to see the impact that we have on those around us as we carefully and prayerfully make decisions as we move into these waning summer days. We ask prayers for safety for all of those who travel, and we ask prayers for all of those who recover from and anticipate surgery. We offer prayers for Laverne and prayers for all of those in this congregation who continue to recover. We offer prayers for all of those who sit beside family, and friends as they transition from this life to the next. We offer prayers for Debbie and for her dad, Bob, and we ask that his passage might be gentle and that you might embrace him into the great cloud of witnesses. And we are mindful for all of those in our midst that mourn and grieve, whether those losses are recent or distant. Surely you are a rock and a refuge to us in times of trial. And we gather all of these prayers together in the name of Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This morning we will be celebrating the sacrament of Holy Communion. So if you have not already done so, I'd like to invite you to gather some elements to eat and to drink. Today, dear friends, we come as guests invited to gather around a feast that is not of this time or of this world. We surround these tables remembering the stories that live within them of a man who was always a guest, of a man who welcomed both sinner and saint to make room beside him so that all people might be made new. And still that voice calls to us. All of you who wish for a deeper faith, a more just world, all of you who wish to be freed from the weight that clings so, clo clings so closely, come to this table and find rest. We here at Pilgrim United Church of Christ believe that there are no barriers to the grace of God. So there are no barriers here at this table. We remember how long ago you loving and gracious God called the world into being. And we give thanks and blessings to you. And while you worked on this earth slowly and carefully, you created that place where one day all of your people would find room. Around this table, we remember the one who came, 
who wandered around this world, who broke loaves of bread and baskets of fish so that all people might be fed. Ordinary people like you and like me were the ones gathered around the table because they were thirsty for a word of hope and starving for grace. It was in Jesus Christ that you offered to us a new way, one marked with hope, with peace, with love, and with justice. And yet, you do not leave us alone. It is your Holy Spirit that attracts us to your goodness and calls us to your grace. So today we come with empty hands and with grateful hearts to receive the healing, the holding, the accepting and forgiving, which you alone can give. It was among friends gathered around a table when Jesus took a loaf of bread. He blessed it. He broke it. He gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body, broken for you. Do this in memory of me. And after the supper was over, he took a cup of wine and said, Taste the new relationship with God made possible because of my life and my death. When you drink this, remember me. And so we ask now, divine God, that you send in kindness your Holy Spirit to settle on these gifts of bread and of wine and fill them with the fullness of Christ. And let that same Spirit make room in us, giving us eyes to see past the patterns of this passing world into the new creation which breaks forth in him whose food we now share. These, dear friends, are the gifts of God for the people of God. This is the body of Christ, broken for you. Take and eat. The cup of blessing poured out for you. Take and drink. Now let us pray together. In gratitude, deep gratitude for this moment, this meal, these gifts, we give ourselves to you. Remind us to live as a changed people, refreshed by your presence and strengthened by the community that holds us. We have shared the gifts of God and cannot remain the same. Ask much of us, expect much from us, enable much by us, encourage many through us. This day might we live as your body in this world. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. And just a reminder to all of you who have received this service in an email, there are some announcements that accompany this service, so feel free to hop back to your email and take a look at our announcements for this morning. And also, I want to say thank you to all of you for your continued support of Pilgrim. We are grateful for the gifts that continue to flow into this place as we continue our work and ministry in Ozaki County and the wider communities. If you feel so moved to donate today, I'd like to invite you to head to our website where you can find a donate online link. As always, you can send your donations directly to the church as well. This morning, as we celebrate the gifts that we bring, we share the Christ, the peace of Christ with one another. May the peace of Christ be with you. Each wall of fans. 
And now, dear friends, go into the world with the grace of Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit now and always. Thanks be to God. Amen.